Great, thank you, Dave. Yeah, I think I'm here for light relief at the uh, end of the, uh, the series. So uh, this project aimed to bring together paleoecologists, so scientists who study long-term ecology, with a collection of artists, visual artists and, and performance artists, to think about how we might sensitise ourselves to the ghostly presence of missing animals in the British countryside. Uh, the, uh, the title, Elephant in the Hedge, we take from George Monbiot's book, Feral, and George talks about how hedgerows, the presence of hedgerows in the British countryside, are evidence of the coexistence of hawthorn and other species with large herbivores that are now missing. You know, hedges exist because plants were smashed down and they grow back again, and people learned how to channel that ability to grow back to create hedges. So we were interested in, the, in sensitizing ourselves to the ghostly <coughs> presence of these um, uh, large herbivores in the context of discussions of rewilding. So rewilding is a a new approach to nature conservation that's coming to the fore, uh, which tries to make a case for the reintroduction of keystone species. So species that are able to have landscape scale effects upon their ecologies when they're reintroduced. So wolves, uh, cows, and perhaps even elephants. You know, how might we imagine the return of the elephant to the British countryside as a provocation to think differently about conservation in the present? Okay, so to do so, um, we went to NEP. Now NEP is a a large, the largest uh, rewilding uh, project in the UK and we hosted a three-day residential workshop at NEP uh, in which we brought together paleoecologists and, and artists and engaged in a set of activities. Uh, NEP used to be a, uh, a dairy farm, it's, it's located in Sussex just uh, outside of Brighton and about 20 years ago the owners of the farm took off the dairy cattle and introduced uh, large herds of uh, native breeds of, of British cattle, horses and pigs, so Tamworth pigs, English longhorn cattle um, and uh, Exmoor ponies. Uh, and they still run it uh, as a farm to a certain extent, but most of the revenue comes from safaris, uh, high-end hospitality, uh, glamping, so we stayed in their glamping facilities, uh, meat, they, 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 they still eat the animals and in fact part of the hospitality is based around eating the wild animals that are on the site um, and they get the ongoing subsidies that sustain British agriculture uh, at, at the present. Um, so what we did is, is, is we went to NEP and we were there for, for three days. This was a collaboration with uh, David Overend, who works in the Performance Studies Department at Royal Holloway, and Daniel Shreve, who's a paleoecologist and a, and a geographer at Royal Holloway. Uh, and we engaged in a set of structured activities over these three days. So we started off with a series of talks from uh, Charlie Burrell, who is the person who runs NEP, who is chair of Rewilding uh, England, who talked about rewilding, talked about their experience on the site. Um, we had a series of talks from, from David and from Danielle and from I setting up rewilding and, and what uh, paleoecologists and performance artists might learn from each other. Um, the next day we then uh, went on a, uh, a, a safari, so this is a, um, a, a, a visualization of the film. They have these amazing Belgian troop carriers. Uh, so Penny took us out around the estate and showed us some of the wildlife, showed us what had been going on in the site and, and trained both the paleoecologists who perhaps didn't know much about the contemporary uh, uh, ecology but also the, the artists as to what's been going on, what are the interesting e ecological developments that have been taking place uh, at this site. We then commissioned Phil Jones who's a cultural geographer and creative walking practitioner to design a subversive walk around the site to get us to think differently about what's being played out uh, through the ecological changes that are underway uh, at, uh, at this location. And one of the things that really struck us from camping in October at this location, uh, not only was it was very cold, but also the deer rut was underway. I don't know if anyone's heard of deer rut. It's a very impressive soundscape. So we were all lying in our tents with no idea what was going on. And it sounded pretty wild. It sounded pretty epic. And all of us had sort of, I guess, really been struck by how noisy the British countryside would have been not so long ago. Uh, so Phil had us blindfolded and we learned to listen in different ways to the, to the soundscape of, of, of NEP. Um, he also had us um, doing um, various kind of creative interactions with the ecology of the site uh, to begin to think differently about what was happening. So that was in the morning and then in the afternoon we had a, a set of uh, closely curated uh, workshops with a performance studies practitioner who got us to work in pairs to think about ways in which we could uh, engage creatively with some ecological process that was underway in the site that we experienced it. So um, 
I was very struck by the acorns that were falling. Um, the, a lot of the architecture had these um, corrugated iron roofs and the acorns were falling and it was a very, again, dramatic soundscape. Um, and spent some time with an artist looking at how the acorns moved around uh, both um, <coughs> as they bounced off the, the roof, but also looking at the role of the jays and other animals that distributed these acorns as an ecological process. We were then brought together to try and create in aggregate a performance piece based on the duets of these artist scientist collaborations. So this image bottom center is the professor of cultural geography at Royal Holloway um, channeling stalk migration um, <laughs> along with other paleoecologists to try and think about the movement of birds through this through this landscape. Um, okay so we had a lot of fun doing this. In terms of outputs we have a paper for Geo Humanities which is a a geography journal at the kind of arts uh, science interface, uh, a set of uh, artworks produced by some of the artists that we brought along. So these are some, some reflections on the site, uh, some of the key concepts from Sarah Hopfinger, who was, who was one of the artists we, we invited. Um, this is another image produced by one of the artists, again, trying to think about collage and, 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 and elephants and, and hedges uh, in, this, in this context. Um, we made a short film, and we've really built now, I think, a, a network for future uh, research collaborations. It was, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, trust building required for these kind of experiments. You know, people put themselves at risk, people embarrass themselves, and there's a real kind of nice atmosphere now <coughs> linking artists and, and scientists together. So, so we're planning to write a, uh, a, an application to the Leverhulme to build a, a research network to, to design a big project. Uh, David wants to develop a site-based performance at NEP. This is David Overend, um, inspired by, by the deer that he encountered to think about how you might use the landscape. Uh, Phil Jones um, how, writes these wonderful handbooks, the counter-tourism handbooks. The subtext there is a handbook for those who want more from heritage sites than a tea shop and an old thing in a glass case. And, um, <laughs> Phil's very keen to write some sort of counter-tourism handbooks about nature reserves to think about how you might read these nature reserves differently, to think about longer ecological dynamics, to think about some of the politics of these sites that we might do not only in nature reserves but in places closer to home. So how might you bring this back to the hedgerows of North London to get people to think about some of these ghostly absences in these locations? Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. So we started with heritage and we ended with heritage. And in, in between, we've been to Africa, the polar regions, uh, the local environment and finance and elsewhere. And I'm sorry if I've forgotten anybody's talk there. Um, I like speedy talks like that. Um, I think it gives a fantastic take on how diverse what we do in this department is. Um, so on behalf of myself, David Thomas and the Research Committee and Gillian Willis, I'd like to thank our speakers again. I'd also like to say that this, is, I think, has been a very good experiment, Heather, in terms of how a very small sum of money can go a huge distance in terms of setting up new activities and new types of research in the department. These all seven projects and our eight speakers, none have received more than a couple of thousand pounds and some a few hundred pounds. And out of that, in terms of value for money, I think has come something very wonderful. So um, let me leave it at that. Um, we now have lunch, Gillian, don't we, in the Gilbert Room for anybody who would like lunch. So with that, please thank our brilliant speakers again and thank you very much.